Dr. Oz, as you all know by now, is running for the Senate in the state of Pennsylvania against Democrat John Fetterman. And a problem is that he is not very charismatic. I've described him previously as the Republican equivalent of Hillary Clinton, where he's so out of touch, so elitist that he can't relate with normal working class Americans. So that's one of the struggles here. Another struggle for Dr. Oz is that He's been a celebrity for a very long time. He's been in the public eye for a long time, given possibly hundreds of speeches and interviews. And some of these speeches and interviews have come back up, and they haven't aged well. But to be fair, even when he said it at the time, really was pretty yikes. So there's a lot to go over. One speech in particular that has kind of blown up online is a speech that he gave at the National Governors Association winter meeting. I don't know the specific year, but this was from a while ago. It was back when Obama was president. But during this speech, he went on a dumb comment speed run and said so many insulting things to people who would be his eventual potential constituents in the event he wins. So the first thing had to do with smokers. Um, and here's what he says about smokers. This is just really messed up. I don't think you ought to hire smokers. I know it's hard to do. 21 states in this country allow private companies not to hire smokers. 29 don't. I appreciate you've all been through this and this conversation. It is, from my perspective, indefensible for us to spend 15% more money at the same time letting people hurt themselves. We have to be smarter than this. You know, for every complex solution is in, you know, or rather every complex problem is an easy solution, it's usually wrong. In this case, we actually have a solution that's going to be complex but will work, which is to find out ways of making it at least legal in every one of the states in America for employers not to have to hire a smoker. And if it's messaged right, I care about you, I'm here for you, I'll pay for your smoking cessation, I want to hire you, but I can't do it if you're doing this, I think that message will actually resonate as opposed to the finger-wagging fear that many have. He quite literally is arguing for workplace discrimination against smokers. Now, look, me personally, I'm not a smoker. I vaped for a little bit, but I quit. Uh, I'm not a smoker, but I support freedom. Keyword, freedom. Therefore, if somebody is a smoker, I don't think that we should go out of our way to discriminate against them. I think that the government, with regard to smokers, should offer them free resources in the event that they want to quit. And perhaps if they encourage healthy behavior, encourage them to stop smoking, that would be great too. However, to penalize them, to strip them of their livelihoods, not offer them a job specifically because they're smokers, that's just, that's fucked up. I'm sorry, that's, that's messed up. Now, perhaps he kind of implied here a little bit that this really had a lot more to do about the economic side, so these small businesses don't have to foot the additional healthcare costs for these smokers. And my solution to that would be, okay, well, how about we just make it so that way businesses don't have to deal with healthcare altogether. We guarantee it as a right in this country. The federal government foots the bill. We have a single-payer system, and healthcare becomes free at the point of service. Well, he doesn't like the idea of healthcare being a right, as he uh, suggests in this next clip. Now, when you go home today, what should you do? I think you ought to think about 15-minute physicals. Your local hospitals will fund these. They're incredibly inexpensive to run. You can screen thousands of people for almost nothing, and you allow a conversation to take place in more of a festival-like setting. It's not scary. And I mentioned earlier that almost everybody who comes to our 15-minute our physicals has a job, but a lot don't have insurance. Give them a way of crawling back out of the abyss of darkness, of fear over not having the health they need and give them an opportunity because they don't have the right to health, but they have the right to access, to a chance to get that health. So Americans don't have the right to health care. To be fair, I don't know if he's saying that they shouldn't have the right to health care or that they currently don't have the right to health care, which would be true, but we want to change that. I think it's probably the former rather than the latter, given his comments lately. But I mean, just to be a doctor and be against health care as a right, I just feel like maybe you're not supposed to be in this field. Like, if I'm a doctor, my goal would be to help people. That's why you take on the medical debt. That's why you go to school for years and years and years. But he's pretty merciful because he at least believes that Americans should have the, uh, let me remember how he phrased this, Americans should have the right to the opportunity of access to health care. Damn, that sounds good. Mm, that's a great sell. I wonder if he's going to run on that. Oh, in fact, he basically is running on that currently. Not in those exact words, but you get the point. He doesn't support healthcare as a right. And he's a doctor. 
Really great doctor. So moving on, let's see what he has to say about dicks. Damn, that was a really good segue. I'm proud of myself for that. But let me bring this up in a different context because hardening of the arteries happens in the kidneys. It happens in the, the, the male organ, which is one of the reasons we just came up yesterday in our conversation with your spouses, by the way. Uh, you know, issues of intimacy. But um, it also, because for the male, it's the dipstick of health. Right? If that part of your body is not working, it's not because you don't care. It's because the other parts of your body aren't working either. It's, and it's also happening in your brain, but it especially happens here. The look on Parnell's face at the end there was just, it was so good. It was so hilarious. Um, and, and like, I get what he's saying, but at the same time, to use the word dipstick to describe your dick as a doctor, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like there's a more eloquent way that you can talk about how your dick is related to, you know, broader healthcare needs. And my favorite response was, was from uh, Farron Cousins who wrote, does he not know how a dipstick works? What exactly should we be dipping into with the male organ to check our health? Female genitalia. I mean, maybe an oil tank, perhaps a wet ass P, P word. word or a dry ass P word if you're Ben Shapiro. You know, I won't judge or maybe I will. Um, either way, I just... It's such a weird thing to say. You can stress like the importance of dick health and the way that that corresponds to other health issues and potential health problems. But it's just, I, I don't know. I don't really have like that much of substance to say. I just thought that it was funny that he described dipsticks or he described dicks as dipsticks. Now, one last thing, not from that particular speech, but when he was on The Breakfast Club back in 2014, he uh, kind of greenlit incest using his expertise as a doctor to say it's cool. So as Caitlin Cruz from Jezebel writes, in an interview with morning radio show The Breakfast Club in February of 2014, host Angela Yee asked Oz to weigh in on a question sent in by a listener about someone struggling with an incestuous relationship. Quote, I'm going to ask you this and you tell me if this is safe for this person, okay? Yee prompted Oz. Well, he said, Yee, I can't stop smashing my cousin. That means sleeping with. Thank you, Yee. She continued to read out the question. We hooked up at a young age and now in our 20s, she still wants it. No matter how much I want to stop. I always give it to her. Help me. What advice would you give that person? Now, this is what he said. If you're more than a first cousin away, it's not a big problem. He responds by saying, okay, so second cousin is fine to smash. Charlemagne adds, it's so funny because I knew that. DJ Envy says, how did you know that? Charlemagne says, because I'm from the country. Third cousins? Oz says, yeah, it's fine. Oz went on to give a basic rehashing of genetics with the hosts. Every family has genetic strengths and weaknesses, he explained. And so the reason we naturally crave people who are not so like us is because you just mix the gene pool up a little bit so that if I had one gene for, let's say, hemophilia, which is a classic example where you bleed a lot if you cut yourself, I don't want to marry a cousin who has the same hemophilia gene because the chance of our child having both those genes is much higher. That's fine, benign even but then oz kept talking quote you know that's why children girls don't like their father's smell their pheromones will actually repel their daughters because they're not supposed to be together oz told the hosts my daughters hate my smell so that was weird and then one of the hosts naturally responded well maybe you just stink and he said well my wife loves my smell what what smell what what are you talking about like okay I know he's a doctor and he's going to explain like whether or not being in an incestuous relationship is going to lead to birth defects and whatnot. But the way he does it in the is in the most bizarre way imaginable to bring up smells and stuff like that. And look, this is how I would answer this. I'm not a doctor, so this is not my expert opinion. This is just me talking out of my ass. But I would say, listen, there are. 7 billion people on this fucking planet. You don't need to fuck your cousin. There's plenty of people out there for you, okay? I'm speaking specifically to you, Billy in Louisiana. You know what you did. So, um, yeah, that would be my advice. But, like, listen, kind of stepping back and looking at all of this, it's clear that Dr. Oz is cool with incest, but definitely not cool with smokers. Like, he's more cool with incest than smokers, even though, you know, smoking is... More common. I think that Patriot Takes, who shared that clip on Twitter of him denouncing smokers, saying that they shouldn't be hired, said that 17% of people in Pennsylvania are smokers. There's a lot of people who are smokers. I have members of my family who are smokers. 
Um, so the fact that he thinks that we should demonize them, that's the assumption anyways, at least if you want to discriminate against them in the workplace, but yet he's cool with incest. It just shows you like this dude is so weird. He's unable to relate with normal people. Um, he's, he's, He's so fake. Everything about him is phony. And now he's trying to do this whole, you know, Republican thing when before he was really politically ambiguous. You know, he is attacking John Fetterman for being associated with Bernie Sanders, which is a good thing, by the way. But when he had Bernie Sanders on his program before, when he used to previously be, you know, more uh, pro-choice, now he's saying that he doesn't support abortion. Like, he's all over the place, and it's so disingenuous, it's so inauthentic, and that's why voters in Pennsylvania, including Republicans, I've talked about this before, they just don't trust him, and they have a reason to not trust him. So, certainly, if you live in Pennsylvania, vote for John Fetterman, because even if, you know, he has some elements of his platform that I disagree with, by and large, he'd be a fantastic senator compared to what we have currently in office. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I don't talk like a politician. I built a successful chicken business. I don't talk like a politician.